After what we saw last week, is TSM back? TSM is back. TSM Ward TSM Subos $210 million. TSM FTF. Let's go. But are they really back? Welcome back to another episode of Off the Dome. My name is Dominic, and today we're talking again about TSM. Now, I've made a lot of videos recently about TSM because one, it gets the big views, but two, I'm very invested in TSM as a team. They're not only the most popular team, they also have the most money, as well as some very good players, and they can't win anything. This makes TSM one of the most interesting teams in North America. Last time I was talking about TSM, it was before they made any big waves in any major tournaments. As of last week, they finally made it through an open qualifier tournament, which means they can make their way into the first closed qualifier tournaments in a long time. So in this video, I want to go over what this tournament run means for TSM going forward into the closed qualifier brackets, and what it means for their chances for going to Berlin. So I know I've already gone through this a couple of times now, but let's quickly go through the background on TSM and their phases as a team. The first phase for TSM was in 2020 Valorant, when the game first came out and teams were still getting established. TSM was one of the best teams in North America, only leading to other top teams like Cloud9, Dignitas, 100 Thieves, etc. Not only did they qualify for First Strike, but they placed second in First Strike, only losing to 100 Thieves. TSM's roster was incredibly strong, mostly going from CS, and having Wardell, one of the best players at the time. The next phase for the team was going to 2021 Valorant. This is where the team started to fall off. Still looking strong, but not qualifying for Masters 1. Then when Masters 2 went international in May, they not only didn't qualify for the playoff brackets, but they only qualified going to the second closed. It was during this time when they both picked up and dropped Brax for the team. TSM still having strong players, but they could not pull it off as a team together. Finally, post Masters 2, TSM really wanted to reinvent themselves. So they dropped Cutler and Drone and picked up Bang and Leviathan. Bang from an ex-Serenity team and Leviathan from Noble. After getting upset in the Challengers 1, they had one last chance to make it through Challengers 2. And that was this past weekend, making through the open bracket in an impressive run. Now to say whether TSM is back to their old dominance again cannot be said because they've only beaten one of the top teams in Anbox. But also putting impressive showings against lower teams as well as Dark Zero, which means going into the close qualifiers of Challengers 2, they could actually do it. This doesn't mean they qualified for Masters 3 in Berlin. It also doesn't mean they qualified for the playoff bracket they qualified for the chance to qualify for the playoff bracket to make it to Berlin. So TSM's journey is not quite done yet. But let's talk about how they actually got here. Let's talk about their run at the Stage 3 Challengers 2 Open Qualifier Bracket and why this impressive run means that TSM is showing signs of life again. The important thing to know about this Open Bracket run was that if they lost a single match, they'd be out of the running until the last chance qualifiers after the Masters in Berlin. Their first two rounds were against Team Mystic and 303 Esports, both kind of tier four, tier five teams with no notable wins. But if TSM lost to these teams, that means that they needed to drop their entire roster. They were doing something very, very wrong. But it was an easy sweep for TSM, 2-0 and 2-0. Next, they're up against Squirtle Squad, a tier two team with some notable names like Som from Dignitas, Dim Sum Boy, and Playboy Joe. These have been some free agents on the market that have been hovering around. They've beaten teams like Dark Zero, Brimstone Gaming, and a few other tier two teams. So if they beat TSM, it would be confirmed that TSM is in the range of tier two, truly falling out of their spot. But it was an easy sweep for TSM, two nothing. It was about to take down the planter. Oh, Nilias to keep his team alive here on the VCT. It's a 1v4, and Wardell has the angle in mid. TSM. The next was gonna be their hardest match in the entirety of the Open Bracket Tournament. That was against Anbox. Anbox has the makings of a top five team. Prior to stage three, everyone online was talking about how they were destroying people in scrims. Their team is incredibly solid, having Mata a young fragger being insanely good, yay, one of the most slept on duelists in North America, having insane stats across the board. Picking up Vice as their IGL from Cloud9 Blue, as well as just recently picking up JC Stani from Immortals, one of the strongest players to leave Immortals, as well as the Waifu from Exit. I like to think of Ambox as the team that picks up all the dropped players that should not have been dropped. People like Thwaifo, JC Stani, Vice have fit incredibly well on the team and they look so strong. 
Map one was Haven and it was Anbox pick, but TSM actually won 13-8 with a top frag from their new pickup, Leviathan. Attackers win. With everyone on TSM going positive in map one, this is incredibly promising for TSM, but going into map two, which was split, Anbox actually strikes back and takes it. It was TSM's pick, and they lost in overtime 14-12. Attackers win. But note that Wardell was plus five in first kills to first death, which means he was starting to wake up as the entry fragger. And one thing to notice from Anbox side was that JC Stani was doing noticeably poor for his strength as a player, going minus 10 in KDA. Finally, in map three, this is the craziest map I've probably ever seen in Valorant. In Icebox, in map three, it goes into overtime. But not just one overtime, but seven overtimes to decide who wins. They played 38 rounds to decide who was the victor of this set, and TSM took it. Attackers win. Wardell was the most positive player on the team, going plus 16 in first kills to first deaths, and went plus 7 overall in KDA. What's crazy to note is that Anbox actually had insane stats on their side too, with Ye putting up over 40 kills and having plus 13 KDA overall, but JC Stani with negative 16 on this map alone. What put TSM over the wall was all of their players were so close in scoreline, all keeping their own weight and that's what let them win in the very end. It looked like Anbox was playing a 4v5 the whole time and they kept it that close. That's how strong Anbox was, but at the same time, that's what led TSM to win the match. It was a 2-1 for TSM. With that win, it was projected that TSM would qualify for the spot, but they had one more match to play against Dark Zero Esports. Not as notably strong as Anbox, but Dark Zero still incredibly good. They're the only free agent team to make it to a closed qualifier for Masters when they did so as Kooky Koalas in Masters 1. This team was very strong, having notable players like Kohler, Anderson, and Screwface, all incredibly good players, and I actually made a video about this team a little while ago. After three very close games, losing map 1 13-11 on their own pick, winning map 2 in overtime 14-12 on Dark Zero's pick, and closing it out on map 3 13-8 to finally qualify to get into the playoffs for Masters 3. Almost all of TSM was positive, the scoreline was much closer. As stated earlier, it seems like their pickups have taken a more wily TSM to a more structured team. Has to reset. Screwface going for the defusal. Halfway done, and Kohler saves the day for Dark Zero, or does he? No, Can he, he doesn't. Get there in time. It's going to be close. No! DSM hits 13. They kill off enough time and eliminate Dark Zero. Going into the close qualifiers at the end of this week, their first match is going to be Gen G, and what is the dumpster classic of the North American Valorant scene? This will be Gen G and TSM's 13th time playing since the April of 2020. Every set is very, very close. Can they beat Gen G? Yes. Will they beat Gen G? We will have to see. Other teams in this close qualifier bracket are T1, LG, Rise, KCP, V1, and FaZe. I think that LG and T1 are almost assured spots in the NA playoff brackets, and I think FaZe and V1 will depend on the day. I think one of Genji or TSM have the potential to make it to the final playoff brackets alongside those that have already made it in Sentinels, Xset, 100 Thieves, and Envy. TSM has been in this position before. They qualified for the Challengers 2 close qualifier brackets to go to Masters 2 playoffs, but lost the round before. We could see the same thing happen to TSM once again, but for them to beat Anbox means they have something back in their water again. Will TSM win Masters 3 in Berlin? Probably not. Will they qualify for Berlin? Probably not. Will they make it to the playoff brackets to qualify for Berlin? Probably not. But what they've shown is that they can play with the best. 
The roster that they put together has potential to grow, and having one of the best fraggers in North America, fuck that guy from the comments, and young hungry players to grow as competition gets more fierce. So, to wrap this up, is TSM back? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs>